In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation enabled chatbot for your site. That is a chatbot that answers questions about your own business or site using the information you give it. I'll also show you how to integrate it into your web page or site, and we'll do this using Flowwise and OpenAI's GPT-40. Okay, so let's get started building our project. So the first thing we need to do is we need to have Flowwise installed somewhere, either locally on our local machine or on a VPS server. It doesn't really matter. But for the purposes of this video, let's install Flowwise locally on our machine. In order to install Flowwise, we need to have Node installed. So that means first open a terminal window if you're on a Mac or a command prompt if you're on a PC. The commands are exactly the same. So here, let's type node-v. If you have a version number here, then it means you have node installed and you can skip this step. Otherwise, if you get a command not found or something similar, then it means you don't have it installed and you need to go to nodejs.org um, and download node.js and install it locally. Once you have it installed, you can go back to your command prompt or terminal and try it out. So after that, we need to install Flowwise. So if we just type Flowwise and hit enter, if you already have it installed, then it will show up as a version of Flowwise here. If not, then you might ha have a command not found. So that means uh, you need to install uh, Flowwise. And that's very easy to do. We just type npm install minus g Flowwise. Okay, obviously I already have it installed, so don't need to run it again, but for you, you need to run that and have Flowwise installed. And once that is done, you can have you can type Flowwise and check uh, that it's installed correctly. Now, once you have it installed, running it is very simple. You just type npx. So this time we have an x here that stands for executor or executable, npx Flowwise start. All right, so we have that started and it's listening at port 3000. So that means we can just go in a browser to localhost 3000 and that will bring us to our Flowwise. You might see a, a login screen. You can just create a, uh, a user account and log in, or if not, it might just take you to this page. Let me just increase that a little bit so hopefully you can see better. All right, so we are done with the installation. Now, one thing to note here is that if you have your Flowwise locally on your device, you cannot actually use it on a web page, right? Because the web page cannot connect to your local device. But if you are running your local device here with Flowwise and you're trying out your web page on a local device, that's perfectly fine. If you want to have a website that's already live accessing your flows, you need to have Flowwise hosted somewhere on the net, either on a hosting platform like Flowwise itself, or you can host it on a VPS server by yourself for free. If you want that second option, check out my video on that topic. But in any case, let's move on. So now we are in Flowwise. Let's go ahead and click on document stores. So here we will add a new document store and let's call this storytelling. Okay, and click add. Now um, let's click in and for the purposes of this video, I'm going to have two documents that we will make available to our agent. And for that, I'm just going to download a Wikipedia article or rather two Wikipedia articles, the one on storytelling and the one on theater. Okay, so I have the two documents downloaded here and we're going to use these as our knowledge base for our agent. And we're going to assume that they are part of a website that is kind of fictional at the moment. Okay, so we are back in document store. So let's upload these documents and convert them in a format that the chatbot can understand. So let's add document loader. Now here we have a bunch of options for document loaders, right? So we can see that we have CVS files, we can have GitHub's JSON files and so on, but I have PDF files. So let me select that. And I have selected my storytelling PDF. We're going to leave most of these options as they are by default. The only thing that we're going to change is the character text splitter. So we're going to choose recursive character text splitter. The reason for the text splitter is basically because we don't want to upload all the data that we have in our knowledge store to our chatbot every time we want to ask a question because that will use up too much processing power, too many tokens and drive up the cost basically. So what we want to do is we want to split these documents into chunks 
and then have only the relevant chunks uploaded to the chatbot when we are having a conversation. So uh, for the chunk size, I'm going to select 2000. I think that's a good size. And we're going to overlap by 200 characters just because that gives us some context when selecting chunks. So let's click on preview chunks. That should split the document into chunks. We can see we have 42 chunks in this uh, storytelling document and we can click on process. All right, so that's done for this document. Now let's add the second document as well. This is also going to be a PDF file. I've selected my theater and the same for the text splitter, recursive character 2000 for chunk size, preview chunks, and then let's click on process. All right, so if you wait a bit and then refresh the page, you can see that the chunks have been updated here. So we have our documents split into chunks. Now we need to upload them, or as we call here, upsert them to our vector database. So to do that, we have more options and click on upsert all chunks. Now we, here we have to select all three um, items. So we have embeddings, which is the uh, LLM model who will kind of manage all of this upserting. We have the vector store, which is similar to a database, but in a format that the LLMs can understand. And we have the record manager. Now this is optional, but it's highly recommended that you have one because when you want to update the data, maybe add more data or delete some, uh, record manager will make sure that everything is uh, kept up to date, right? So no extra data in the database and so on. So for the embeddings, now let's go to OpenAI embeddings. And here we need to create a credential. So if you already have one, that's fine, select that. If not, you can go to platform.openai.com forward slash API keys. If you don't have an account with them, go ahead and create one. And then we select a new key. And here you can add your key, you will receive the key, and then you can um, go back and add or create a new one here, API key, and put your API key here. And that's basically all there is to it. All right, so select your API key. Now for the model name, this is important. We're gonna choose embedding small because that will correspond to our uh, vector store on Upstash. And then for the rest, we're gonna leave everything blank. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and save the config for now. And then we're going to go with vector store. Now here we have Upstash vector. We're gonna use this, it's a free tier. So we can use it as much as we want. Just go to upstash.com and create an account. I already have one obviously, so I'm gonna click login. And then when creating an account, you're gonna be able to create an index on the free tier. Only one, they don't allow more than one index. So I'm going to reuse my existing index for this purpose. I'm gonna call this storytelling. And if we click on it, we have the connection information here. So we have the endpoint, and the token. So we need to update that in our FlowWise. Under credentials, go ahead and create a new one and you're gonna call this whatever name you prefer and you have the URL and the token. So I'm gonna call this Upstash API, paste the URL and paste the token and click add. All right, so that's all there is to it for the vector store. Let me save the config and let's move on to the record manager and we're gonna use Postgres record manager and for this, we're gonna use Superbase. So now go to superbase.com and create an account. They have a free tier, of course, so we can use that. Let's go to dashboard. And during the account creation, you're gonna be able to create an organization. I already have one. And let's go create a new project. And I'm gonna call this story telling. Make sure you give your database a password and then click on create new project. All right, so now let's click up here on connect. Let me just increase this a little bit on connect. And down below, we're gonna look for transaction pooler and we're gonna expand the parameters and we're gonna use these parameters, right? So I'm just gonna copy the user for now and let's go back to Flowwise and create a new credential. And I'm gonna call this Superbase Postgres. I'm gonna paste the user and type in my password and click add. All right, now we need host, database, and port. So let me just copy that, host. 
All right, host database and port. We need to change one more thing. So if we scroll all the way down, we have this cleanup um, element. And here, instead of none, we're gonna set to full. This basically says that when you delete data from your document store, the manager will also delete the data from the vector store, okay? So it's it keeps everything in sync. Let's go ahead and save config. And if everything was correctly configured, we can cl click upsert and wait for the data to be processed. Okay, so there we go. We have 97 uh, records added. We can actually test this retrieval with a regular speech query. I'm gonna ask what is storytelling and hit enter. And there we go. We got four chunks back example use of storytelling and so on. So if you expand these, you can read about them in more detail. So that's pretty much all we need to do here for the uh, document store. Now let's move to agent flows and we're going to create our agent flow here. So let's go ahead and click on add new. And we're just going to have a start node by default. This is quite simple to implement. We're just going to add an agent, double click on that, and we're going to call this storytelling chatbot, hit enter. Now for the model, we're going to choose OpenAI. I recommend you choose a smarter model. So I'm going to connect my credentials and I'm going to choose 4.0 latest. The temperature is the creativity. So I'm going to leave at 0 0.9 since this is a, or should be a creative bot. And here importantly, we're going to add knowledge to our chatbot and we're going to choose storytelling. Now for the description, let's expand this box and I'm just going to paste my description here. I've added a lot of information. So for example, you are an imaginative and helpful chatbot for Tailspinner is the site that um, I have made up, a storytelling site to, devoted to captivating narratives and so on and so forth. If you want to type this yourself, go ahead and do that. If not, um, look down below in the description for links to download some documents that contain this. So save that. That's basically all we need for our chatbot. Now let's connect everything. And up here, let's go, let's save this uh, flow. So we're going to call this storytelling agent flow, click save. So now, for example, let's have a look at the storytelling article and let's ask some specific information. So let me just copy this, for example, and open up a chat window and ask what is this? All right, there we go. So it received information from the document store or retrieved it rather and answered our question correctly. So we now have a working flow here and we need to integrate it into our website. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I have created a very small site or, or web page rather, an index.html and we just have a title here and I've cheekily added the logo for my own website. So if you want to use the same web page, you can just download it from the link in the description. If not, you can just generate your own or ask GPT to generate one for you. So the point here is we're going to integrate our chat flow down below here so that we can um, interact with it. Okay, let me just increase the size of this a little bit. So hopefully the chat flow will be more visible. Now I have this index.html page. You can use any reader, any text reader or editor to open it. For me, I'm just gonna use Visual Studio Code because I'm used to it, I have it installed and so on, but you can use pretty much anything you like to update that information, that page. So you can see this is very, very basic. It just has some style information and just an, a title and an image with a link. And that's basically all there is to it. Now let's go back to our flow wise. And here, up here, we have a button that allows us to integrate our script. So you have the script here for integration. Just go ahead and copy that. Go back to your editor. And if you find the tag head underneath that, go ahead and paste your script and save your file. And that's basically all we need to do in order to integrate it. Let's go ahead and open it up. And once you open that web page, you can see that you have the chatbot integrated down below. It says, hi there, how can I help? And you can say, what is storytelling? There we go. So we got the response. This is clearly taken from the 
uh, Wikipedia page that we downloaded and added to the uh, knowledge store. Now, before we end this video, I have two extra tips for you on how to personalize this uh, chatbot. So the first one is in Flowwise, under options here or settings, configuration, you have a bunch of options for configuration, right? So for example, you have rate limit, you can enable uh, a limit on the messages that each individual session can accept. So five, ses five messages per 60 seconds duration and a limit message, okay? So you can enable that. You can restrict the domains that this conversation is available to. You can have some starter prompts so for example, I've added two starter prompts here. So if I go back to my web page and refresh the page, open it up, let me just refresh the chat and you can see the starter prompts here down below. And then of course you have others. You have follow-up prompts, which allows the system to propose some other uh, follow-up conversation and go through these, you can check those out. So we can save that. So that's tip number one. Now tip number two is even though you have some configuration here, this is quite limited. There is very, very little you can do here. And for me personally, I don't really like the look of this. So for example, here it says powered by Flowwise. I don't really like that. I would like to have a title, maybe an image. I would like to have different colors and so on. So in order to change that, you have this Git repository, right? It's called Flowwise Chat Embed. And if you scroll down a bit, you will find that you have some personalization options for your, some configuration for your chatbot. So you have, for example, theme, you have the button, you have some information, you have uh, a bunch of stuff. So a chat window here, you see you have many, many options in code that you do not have in the uh, window. So let me give you an example of how you might use that. So here back in my Visual Studio code, I have updated my script to actually use the theme uh, elements that were in that GitHub repository. You don't need to import that GitHub, you just need to update your script and it will do everything automatically. So for example, here I have a new title for my chat window. I have a welcome message. I have updated a starter prompt, some footer information and so on. So if I go back to my browser and I refresh this page, you should already start to see the difference. You can see that the position has changed. If I click on it, you can see that we have, um, let me just decrease the size. You can see that we have a title. We can see that we have a different message at the beginning. We have other starter prompts and down below we have by tail spinner. Okay. So we can personalize all of this, but we can do it in code and not in configuration in Flowwise. Um, in any case, if you want to download the updated file, go ahead in the description and check out the links. You will find the link there for the file so that you can play with it. You can use it yourself. The only thing is when you go back to your editor, make sure you change your chat flow ID and your API host. If for example, you're running Flowwise locally, you should have here something like localhost column 3000. Okay, so something like that. But in any case, that's basically all there is to it. I want to thank you for watching the video, sticking around till the end, and I will see you in the next video.